When the World Rally Championship arrives at the most westerly country in Europe, the entire population takes time off to watch. The Rally of Portugal is run mainly on gravel roads by the coast. On every straight and turn, drivers pass a sea of spectators. They pack the roadside in their thousands, often spilling onto the road itself. Portugal may not have turned out many rally champions, but this event is a definite winner. Hello there and welcome back to some more WRC. Today we're continuing our Let's Play. Uh, this is episode 17. In today's episode, we are continuing our trek in the Hyundai on professional difficulty. We are now at the Rally de Portugal once again. Okay. On stage at the Rally, Three, our first two, gravel rally one, of the go. professional trek. We've actually had all types of service, I think, this far around. We, of course, had the. Uh, Tarmac in Monte Carlo, we've had snow in Sweden, and now we are once again back on the good stuff, the good old gravel rallies. Uh, we actually get a chance to really see what the Hyundai is going to be like for the vast majority of our rallying run. So far on tarmac, it proved to be pretty well. On snow, I've got to be honest, I didn't really notice too much of a difference between it and the Subaru. Again, all the cars definitely do drive differently in this game, but uh, in terms of like actual straight line performance and quickest car overall in the game, I'm not really sure. If I had to make an educated guess, I'd probably say the quickest car in this game is very likely to be the Peugeot. Because the Peugeot was a dominant car in WRC, and it is the smallest car and as a result probably has the least amount of mass, so... If I had to make a guess, the shorter the car, the better Peugeot would probably be the quickest car. Maybe the Citroen would be up there. No, actually no, because the Citroen doesn't do very well in the career mode. I'm not too sure on the others. Mitsubishi and the Subaru, I'm fairly certain, are tied when it comes to performance. Subaru may have the edge straight line, Mitsubishi have the edge in the corners, or vice versa. And then uh, Skoda probably just has the worst traits of the Mitsubishi in the fact that it's bigger. Probably Skoda might be the weakest car in this game, thinking about it. Maybe the Skoda or the Citroen. And then the Hyundai is sort of a mid pack car. I think I've cut that corner a little bit too much see what the final time is but I don't think that was amazingly good uh, actually we're only losing out slightly to Burns Burns you fucking prick should have been doing better in your life fucking when he was a teammate he was shit as soon as I have to drive against him he can get a stage win incredible and say that he did pretty well in the uh, the British rally at the end where he pretty much dominated every single sector so Burns McRae signs a looks Didier and Mackinac, I'm not going to pronounce his last name, I don't know if you've realised that at this point. And then everyone else is sort of... Eh. Jesus was the slowest, followed by Panizzi. Panizzi really does not have a good time according to this game, which is fascinating to me. Stage numero two for our... I just realised the Hyundai looks really angry. <laughs> it's like, it wouldn't be too bad, but... In front of the... I don't think there's a look back, so we can't look back on it, but um... I'll try and point this out next time we've got a loading screen in the brief time that we do. It has like the normal intercooler, but then it has an extra grill on top of that which is designed to make it look really... Or, uh, he's obviously designed to take in more air. Uh, which of course is a big thing in a rally car, you know, you want as much air as possible available to the engine but they've added like an extra grill but it spikes up in the middle so it ends up making a rather angry looking car which doesn't isn't really helped by the fact that the um, just in general I've spoke about this before when we was driving the Subaru the cars in this game are very flat at the rear end of them which is weird uh, it ends up making a lot of the cars look slightly off uh, 
you know, again, the Subaru looked a little bit off. The worst ones for that are probably the Citroen, Citroen and the Skoda. This does have that pretty badly, you know, I mean, the rear end of this doesn't really look all that much like an accent. The rear lights are much bigger than they would be on a standard accent, but in fairness, uh, it does actually make the car look a little bit better, in my opinion, a little bit more purposeful. Uh, the spoiler doesn't really help on this car though, because it has got a pretty... It's a very weird looking spoiler on the Hyundai. It does look like it should be bigger. Unless... Well, actually, to be fair, they've like massively flared out the wheel arches, which was a pretty big difference between the, uh, the Evo 2 and uh, the standard version of the Accent WRC car, I think. But, uh, yeah. Either way, I would say this car probably looks better than the standard Accent. Although, looking back on it, the Accent... The thing is with the Accent is it, it wasn't a terrible looking car. It was a little bit weird looking. Don't, well, I say a little bit weird looking. Very cheap looking. Uh, you know, it's definitely a car that looked like how much it cost, but uh, it was necessarily never really an ugly car, like you could uh, say some of the later Hyundais are. You know, cars like the uh, the horrific i30 from a couple of years ago. The new i30 is not too bad, but uh, the one before that, I believe in America they sold it as the Elantra GT. That was a horrific car. Especially if you got that car in like a um, base model trim which a lot of people did because it's a Hyundai. Um, that car was... no. <laughs> it's it, not a good looking car. But uh, the accent wasn't really that bad. Oh wow, we are fine. Yeah, I know I'd lose some time. This is, uh, this is more what I was expecting professional difficulty to be, where we can keep up relatively well, but if we end up having a sizable off at some point, then uh, that will probably shunt us out of uh, doing good. Well, as on normal difficulty, even if we have like the most, like we've fallen off of cliffs and stuff in normal difficulty and come back to, you know, get first, second or third on a stage. I don't think that's quite going to happen here. But uh, we shall see. Seven seconds down. Burns, which is not good. Yeah, you see what I mean with the intercooler? Right there. They, it, it, do, it does look like an edgy teenager. It, it's quite tragic, bless it. I think that might have been slower than our time in normal because of that off as well. Oh well. There's still a fair bit of this rally left to... Uh... Yeah, it's only stage two. I'm not too worried yet. Uh, so we are down on Burns and Signs in third place, followed by Loix, Mackinnon and Didier. Stage numero three. Let's hope we, our fortunes are a bit better in this stage. Okay, stage numero three. Almost halfway three, through this rally two, with the Hyundai. One, Let's see if we can claw back those places. We are eight seconds eight, down two, on the leader of this rally. I'm relatively confident if we have a good drive we should be able to do that. I'm not, again, I'm not massively worried if we do end up losing this one slightly, but like I've said before, the more rallies I can get under my stage now, I want a pretty decent buffer for when we go into places like Italy and Rally Great Britain. They're the two I'm... From the first playthrough of this, um, Italy and Rally Great Britain are the two I'm really worried about. Maybe the French one as well, actually. Italy, France, and uh, Rally Great Britain are the ones I'm really worried about. The tarmac stages seem like they're going a lot better, and we have got Spain next. Um, that was really not what I wanted. <sighs> Fuck. I could have really dealt without that, but... Uh, yeah, this isn't even that long a stage either, so there's not really much time to uh, bounce back on that one. Yeah, that might have uh, killed our rally, but uh, we shall see. Still two stages to go, so I'm not going to fully throw in the towel yet. What are we on? Three seconds. We might be able to get that back. But then again, I mean, stage wins are one thing. It's not calculated on stage wins, it's total time. So even if we get to win this one stage, you know, it's not 
a magical fail safe. I'm trying to remember which one. Signs is the closer of the two, isn't he? Again, Burns doing well now, of course. Now that we're not partnered with him. Twat. And finish. Four seconds down. Alright, apparently we lost a second somewhere. Not quite sure how. But that, of course, extends both of the leads, which is not good. If, I, if we didn't fall over, we might have... But then again, it would have only just been a clinch, so I'm not too worried. And again, we've still got two stages to go either way. So we are signed Burns, McRae, Loix, Schwartz and the Uh And we are now nine seconds down on Burns, two, uh, about f seven seconds down on signs. Alrighty, stage number four, let's see if we can claw back some of that time. Stage numero four, we're in a slightly Three, neat stage here. Two, one, go. Let's see how we do here. It sounds like we got Murray Walker in the uh, the co-driver's seats on that. Three, two, one, go! I'm trying to name that guy now. What is Denise doing? There you go. What of, uh, sorry, Murray Walker. <laughs> my my utmost apologies for um, uh, an attempt to do your thing. He did comms in on everything back in the day. I wonder if he ended up doing the, uh, the WRC television commenting at some point. It wouldn't surprise me. Although, actually, I think the WRC's mostly had um, that British sounding guy that they get to do, or that I've seen in most historical clips. I don't know if he still does it to this day, but it really wouldn't surprise me. I have actually seen rallying on TV relatively recently, and I don't really remember much about it. If you want to know by uh, what I mean by relatively recently, there was a Volkswagen kicking up a load of sand. So that says to me that it was probably Australia in a polo, which probably would have been, forgot his name, the other guy called Sebastian. Sebastian is here. That guy. In a, a car that was really good and really successful, and Volkswagen was like, yeah, we're bored of winning. And Citroen was like, wow, that's stupid. And then Citroen did like exactly the same thing. Although, in fairness to Citroen, they did get beat by Toyota, so they were like, eh, you know what? I can't remember why Citroen pulled out either, to be honest with you. Probably something to do with Stellaris. Which, in case you don't know, is uh, the official name of the FCA PSA group thing now. It's now just called Stellaris for some reason. So. Yeah, there are 14 brands, and everyone sat there going, well, that's a monopoly, and not realizing the Volkswagen group exists, which pretty much the same thing, so... Yeah. Although it does sadden me that uh, the next Fiat Punto is probably just going to be a Peugeot 208. Not that Peugeot 208 is a bad car, it's actually a very, very good car. But, uh, yeah. Uh, I want better for the Fiat Panda and stuff like that. No one. This car's got really dusty. That was a pretty good stage. Although, fuck, Burns got more time back on that last bit. Burns was like, we was eight seconds up on Burns that entire time, and then through that final sector, he was just super quick. All right, that's probably brought us a lot closer, though. Probably the tensest moment I've had in this entire LP so far. So we are three seconds up on Burns, eight seconds up on Signs, Lawrence, Mack and Schwartz. Six seconds to get to Burns. Right. Okay, we sh maybe. I don't think we're gonna beat Burns, but uh, if I can stay second, that's the important part. Time to go into stage number five, which apparently is called Faf. 
The right opinion has just uploaded a video that's Three, four and a two, half hours one, long. Go. 50, Fucking hell. He only went on for like four it's hours about the guy I've never heard three. of before. And he only went on for like two hours about, um, oh god, 50, what was his name? Right, Fucking four. Yandere Simulator. Overcrest. Dev guy, that mm, strange, strange one, six, game. Yeah. In case you're wondering sort of what sort of content I consume on YouTube, it is very bottom of the barrel trashy content. I will freely admit that I do enjoy uh, the drama side of YouTube for some reason. I'm not subscribed to Drama Alert because that got really stale, but I have been in previously. Uh, but in terms of like most of my viewing stuff these days, I... Doug Demiro, of course, I've always liked his stuff when I get to sit down. Hugo one, if I, you know, want to wish five hours away, I'll just stick on one of Hugo one's funny streams, watch a section of it, and then watch it over the course of a couple of weeks. So, and I mean, the main channels at the moment, Adrian Millward, Aiden Millward, his story time stuff, I've been watching a lot of that stuff, just while I'm doing other stuff, you know, as a background podcast style thing. Uh, I'm getting into F1 stuff, so I'm uh, getting into a couple of F1 channels. Josh Ravel, uh, Tomo F1, the other two that come to mind. They're pretty good channels. Um, yeah, and then just the usual stuff. If you, usually for me, if you ever want to find out sort of what I'd like to watch and who I'm a you know, who I want to watch and also some friends on YouTube that I do watch their stuff as well. Uh, definitely check out my, if you are all interested in that, I have no idea why you would be. But uh, if you check out on my YouTube channel, I have like a featured channels thing. Just click on that and uh, yeah, if I watch them semi reg I haven't updated it for a while so that's why I'm mentioning Aiden. Uh, Tomo and stuff like that, but pretty much every thin out that I watch is just on that feature channel And my subscriptions are always public if you want to go ahead and have a look at that as well, so There's some snooping you can do if you wish Anyways, that was not a win on the overall rally, although apparently we did pretty good on the leaderboard But I think Burns has snubbed us so Carlos Sainz was the winner, so Sainz, McRae, Burns, McInnes, Lloyds and Schwartz. Yeah, we were four seconds down on Burns at the end. Again, if, I, if, if we didn't have that rollover, I think we could have done it. And we just beat Carlos Sainz, uh, which is pretty good. So uh, we are still in the lead, 26 points up on Carlos Sainz, so we've got a 10 point lead. Then Richard Burns with 10 points, because he was useful, useless when he was racing for us and now uh, yeah uh, so he's up to 11 points Mackinnon on 9 points Marcus Gronholm on 4 and Francis Delacour is on 3 points and Freddie Loix also gained 3 points in that last rally so uh, yeah in terms of manufacturer standings Hyundai on 28 points Ford on 16 Subaru have gone from 6th to 3rd uh, up to 13 points Mitsubishi with 12 points Skoda score another point for some reason now putting them on 5 points, Persia with 4 points, and Citroen still with no points whatsoever. So thank you all very much for watching, next time we're going to be taking a look at the Rally of Spain, so join us for that, until then, farewell.